When I was suffering from horrible food reactions that triggered my manic depression symptoms, one simple concentration meditation helped me focus better. I'd like to share it to you. It's only two sentences long, and it's probably one of the most unusual meditation techniques for focus you'll have ever encountered. But I'm guessing that it's going to help you a ton, especially when you combine it with one of the recommendations at the end of the video. Let's dig in. Hi there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMerryMethod.com. If you're new here and want free memory improvement tips and powerful focus boosting strategies, get started now by hitting the subscribe button and enabling notifications. And for the love of memory, hit that thumbs up. That's important because it helps me keep helping you deepen your knowledge of the great memory tradition as I take the adventure myself to learn as much as I can. It's simple really, but not if you can't focus or concentrate. And that's what used to happen to me when I ate foods that weren't good for me. It's not that they weren't healthy foods, but weird reactions took place whenever I ate certain ingredients. And it was a long time before I figured out what I needed to remove from my diet. And as I explored this process through elimination diets and rotation diets, the odd time I'd make a mistake and experience a massive mood swing. I would literally freak out, usually just inside my mind. It's like something apocalyptic. It really felt like the end of the world and I could not focus my mind. Well, in this second video in our Focus Your Mind series, I'd like to share a simple process anyone can use to calm down and regain focus. It might take a bit of practice, but what skill worth learning doesn't require practice? The answer is none. And I honestly don't know how much practice you'll need, but for me, the results were almost instantaneous. And that's because I combined this simple concentration meditation with the three elegant and powerful ways to increase concentration power we discussed in part one of this series. I got the link for you down below if you missed it. Now, the simple and fast concentration meditation I have for you in today's video comes from a long series of self-inquiry questions I've memorized. And they are deceptively simple. In fact, they are so simple, some people might not even bother trying them. Please don't be in that crowd. We got enough hoi polloi running around mindlessly, don't you think? And by the way, please don't mistake me for being arrogant. Sometimes I still fall into the traps of hoi polloi thinking myself. And that's why I love this simple and fast concentration meditation based on two self-inquiry questions. The questions are, are my thoughts useful? How do they behave? Now, I got them from Dr. Gary Weber in a book called Evolving Beyond Thought, Updating Your Brain's Software. Please read it. When I first memorized the full Sanskrit set of self-inquiry passages given in the book, I made a fruitful mistake. You see, all the Sanskrit is listed at the back, and the very first one I memorized says at the top, are my thoughts useful? How do they behave? Which was the chapter title. In fact, the Sanskrit I memorized is this in Sanskrit and English translation. Chittameva Mahadosham, thought alone, great folly. Chittameva hi balakaha, thought alone is small boy. Chittameva Mahatmayam, Chittameva Mahanasat. Thought alone, great soul, this thought alone, great unreality. Now that's very powerful too. But when I was reciting the Sanskrit, I kept thinking, are my thoughts useful? How do they behave? And the answer to the question is usually something like the English translation of the Sanskrit. My thoughts are usually completely mistaken about what is really going on in reality. They are, therefore, in folly. The thoughts usually are something like a scared boy running around and crying even though I am an adult. The point is that, although our thoughts are real and really do happen to us, what they point to often are not real. And in the midst of pain or food reactions and mood swings, it was very easy to get caught up in the suffering and think my thoughts were real. It happens to a lot of people all day long. But with these two simple questions, you step into a state of self-reflection. With practice, the noisy thoughts simply break up and fade away. Because I've gone on to memorize all 32 of the Sanskrit phases in Evolving Beyond Thought, I've gotten better at breaking up thoughts for longer and longer periods of time. This has created great stillness and made it possible for me to remember even more than I used to before. I can also read with greater focus, and that means more pleasure. And I just don't get hung up on things like I used to, sometimes completely ensnared by internal battles that had absolutely no bearing on reality. Now, if you just want to memorize the English or go for gold with the Sanskrit too, the process is fun, simple, and relatively easy. I don't know why some people take to these skills like ducks to water, but don't worry if you struggle. Many people work through their issues with the Memory Palace technique we focus on over at MagneticMerryMethod.com. 
I've got a free course that takes you through everything with worksheets and student examples. And if you find yourself getting frustrated with any of the steps, just use this simple meditation to help you get past it. Are my thoughts useful? How do they behave? I do this myself when taking courses and dealing with paperwork. And believe me, I take a lot of courses and deal with a ton of things, just like everyone else. Obviously, I'm very glad I've memorized so many of these self-inquiry tools, but I started with just these two. The impact they made helped me immediately, and it gets better and better the more I practice. Plus, Dr. Weber was very wise in placing these phrases first due to something in memory called primacy effect. Primacy effect almost guarantees that what we encounter first will be remembered the most and with greatest ease. Likewise, what we remember last will have similar ease. It doesn't always happen, but if you do memorize all 32, you'll find that there's great wisdom in how the sequence ends too. Whatever you do, just get started. Some people overthink things, and you know what? I did too. I meditated for years, sitting just to sit, as Alan Watts put it. And it's not a bad meditation, but there was no way I was gonna chant things or do yoga or anything that even remotely smacked of religiosity. And to be clear, as good as primacy effect can be, my encounter with Alan Watts sitting just to sit technique held me in that prison for a long time. But I had the great fortune of someone who introduced me to Dr. Weber's books named Ben Fischel from ProjectMonkeyMind.com. And because it's all based on real science and experiments anyone can run, that was exactly what I needed to hear to give it a try. Please be kind to yourself if you can't get yourself to take action. I've been there too. I've been the horse led to water who would not drink so many times it makes me want to poke my eyes out like Oedipus with regret. We're just hoi polloi, every last one of us. And the sooner we realize that our memory and things like the primacy and recency effect are both a cure and a poison, the sooner we can get on with the experimenting and using our memory in different ways. Everything you need to help you memorize the English and the Sanskrit is either on this channel or included in the free course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT. Maybe some kind of primacy effect makes you not want to exit YouTube to study it over there, and that's fine. I'll keep inviting you. Or maybe you're wondering why you have dreams and desires, hopes and goals, but can't ever be consistent in taking steps to accomplish them. I truly have no idea, but maybe it's a lack of focus and concentration due to unwanted thoughts. Please give this meditation a try. I'll be back with more on our Focus Your Mind playlist soon. These are the topics of a forthcoming book I'm releasing soon too. So if you want advanced notices, a memory palace walkthrough, and other cool tutorials, go now to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash VM to register. The first reveal is waiting for you, and I can't wait for you to look inside one of my memory palaces. One last tip. This is gonna sound crazy, but if you really want to turn this simple meditation into a habit that lasts for life, get yourself a journal and commit to completing it for 90 days. Richard Weissman's 59 seconds goes deep into why 90 days is a kind of magic number, and you'll get a lot more success out of that. You want to practice so that you're prepared, and in video one of this series, I gave you some tips on how and where to set up a daily practice, along with three more focus and concentration exercises you don't want to miss. Check it out if you haven't already, and do those things for 90 days too. I'm confident it will change your life completely for the better, and you'll look back and wonder why they don't teach this stuff in schools. And then maybe you'll go to teach them in schools yourself, or at least teach someone. That's important because you learn more by teaching what you know, and the more you learn, the more you can learn. Thanks as ever for the view. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already, and get subscribed for more powerful memory, focus, and concentration tips and resources like the Magnetic Memory Method community has helped me share with you today. And remember, you are the asset. You are the champion horse. You are the one who can rescue yourself from the complexities of the world. Thanks again, and until part three of this series is ready, come visit me at magneticmerrymethod.com and keep yourself magnetic.